Sunday night and I'm wanting to cover a few things from this week. It hasn't really worked out as I intended. Um, I wanted to try and do a video diary. God, this is an unflattering angle. Um, a video diary showing sort of the effects of the week. And to be honest, I've not had the most difficult week physically. So it might be kind of hard to do that. So I'm going to talk about a lot of different things instead. And I'm actually I'm not on my own right now. I am accompanied by Sebastian, who is here. Oh, stop wriggling, you silly boy. And uh, Rupert, two of my five very beautiful and very amazing rats. Come on, I'll put you back where you were. Come on, Rupi. You go over here. Good boys. Sorry. Uh, they have come to accompany me because they like playing and being out of the cage. So I thought I'd let them have the opportunity to play while I can tickle them and you won't notice as viewers. So... A um, couple of things I want to talk about. I'm going to talk about bracing and um, things we can do with our joints. But I'm going to do that in a moment because I want to physically show some of my braces and me wearing them. And that, not exactly easy. Um, kind of revealing. Uh, difficult for me because it's something obviously I hide from most people by definition. It's all under my clothes. People don't see it. I mean, you can see now I'm wearing compression wear, which I usually hide people who know me know I often wear a scarf um, that's why it hides the fact that I've got all this shit under my clothes um, what I want to talk about now is something that's literally just been on Twitter and I can't honestly think of the person who said it so I'm going to have to quickly look them up and hoping Sebastian doesn't fall off the end of my bed while I do this Sebby, come back he had a stroke when he was a few weeks old, so he's a disabled rat as well. And he's not very good and not very coordinated, so he's a bit troublesome. Right, I um, read a tweet that was retweeted. Um, it's actually, sorry, it was a newspaper article from uh, the BBC. I've gone completely out of touch. It's a BBC article from Newsbeat of a girl called Lucy... Does it say her surname... Doesn't seem to. Lucy has Ella's Nan loss as well. And it probably does say her surname if I watch the videos that are attached to it. But she wants to talk about the fact that sex with um, a life-limiting disability isn't something we really talk about much. And the EDS UK feed retweeted that. And then I posted a tweet about the fact that we really need frank discussion hello about this kind of thing and someone um nicole gore who um tweets as at mrs gb um also tweeted she has um if i get this right idiopathic intracranial hypertension and has similarly tweeted about the fact that we need this frank discussion about sex with disability so I thought well as I've got the camera and I'm going to do some video diary type stuff this week I thought well I could kind of start tackling this as we go um I can't talk about the female side of things because I don't have a vagina but I can talk about a lot of the problems Rupert's just gone up my shirt so he's going to appear here in a minute and look really cute um I can talk about a lot of the more generic stuff because to be honest um most of the problems are probably fairly similar in EDS, um, sex is a problem for a lot of reasons. Firstly, our joints dislocate. I can tell you from first-hand experience that dislocating your hip joints or your sacroiliac joints during sex is not exactly appealing to most people. Um, ankles go quite easily as well. Wrists, dare I say it. I'm going to be very frank in this discussion, so this is not one for the faint-hearted, I'm afraid, but I think it's one that needs to be had, and I really do recommend this, actually, even for younger viewers who are discovering that they've just had an EDS diagnosis and are worried about this, you know, when you're at an age where you haven't had sex yet and it's all a big issue and a big taboo, learning a bit more about the limitations of, hello, Rupert, of EDS are probably pretty important at that age so that you get a full picture. Now... A lot of us are on quite heavy medication. I find pregabalin and strong opioids disrupt sensation in certain parts of the body. They also cause lowered sex drive. They can cause impotence in men. They can cause problems with just generally having no desire whatsoever to have sex. I mean, really, it is. I would say I've gone from having a fairly high sex drive to actually having virtually none most of the time and that obviously has its own problems 
over time, that sort of thing you can learn to work with because you can try and learn when, kind of through your day or whatever, things are working or aren't, and you can kind of live with things. In men, there are hormonal changes when you've used long-term opioids, uh, long-term strong opioids, I should say. Your testosterone can go down, so we get an effect from that, obviously. There is the issue of potency, of impotence. Now, there are drugs for that. There are things that can be done for that. So I wouldn't necessarily say that that is sort of the end of the world, I guess. But it is a problem. Loss of sensation is a problem. And orgasmia is a problem. A lot of us, if we're taking strong opioids, will be suffering with those kinds of effects. How do we handle those? How do we handle with dislocations? How do we get through it well the answer is i think really communication is really important and to be honest this makes the idea of starting a new relationship for me and i'm single at the moment pretty terrifying because i'm gonna have to have this discussion with someone i'm gonna have to say well look before we even get anywhere remotely near the bedroom you need to know how not to damage me you need to know what might happen and i want you to feel comfortable with me and i don't want you panic if you dislocate my hips because that's a kind of normal occurrence for me so getting all of that into context where people can actually have those discussions is hard I don't think a lot of able-bodied people are ready for on a first or second or third date to be having those kinds of discussions with us so yeah it is bloody difficult and that is why these videos are not just for me for to tell other people with EDS well what works and what doesn't it's also about ensuring that able-bodied people get an understanding and can um sorry I've got two very 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 interested in the camera rats here who really want to talk and disrupt this um go away naughty rat he might calm down if he sits no fine <laughs> They are ridiculous. I don't actually know why I brought them here. I thought they might look cute on camera and they're just being really annoying. Anyway, I really think it's important that able-bodied people get an understanding of what these problems are. And not just in a sort of specific sense. I think it's pretty important that able-bodied people feel not uncomfortable with us when we need to have these discussions with them. I'd like to think that people could not run screaming when they find out, I mean, to be honest, I've had bad experiences even just a couple of years about internet dating, having to tell people before the first date, you know, it's all organised, we know where we're going, and I have to say, and I, I have a choice, I can either not say this and watch people's reaction and watch them feeling uncomfortable, or I can tell them and they cancel the date. I walk with the stick, if I tell someone that, they do cancel on me, it happens I have once told someone in advance and they haven't run screaming. That's the only time where I've not had a problem. I told someone literally immediately before we were about to meet and they were completely fine with it. We didn't click at all and we're actually really good friends now, but that's once out of quite a lot of times where it's either been cancelled completely or I've had to spend the entire time with them of them staring at it or staring at me and just feeling really, really uncomfortable and it hasn't worked. So how the hell do we get around that? I don't know. But I think able-bodied people need to set their expectations slightly differently, maybe. I mean, I was pretty able-bodied till five or six years ago. How would I have reacted? I honestly don't know. I think I might have been a twat as well. But even getting through that stage is hard. And if people are reacting to us badly in that way... How are they going to react to us when they get to the next step and we have to tell them all the things we can't do and we can do and we can do if we do this or whatever? It's not easy. It really isn't. 